Welcome to the August 22nd, 2018, Your Living Brand Live show. My name is Ben Baker. My company is Your Brand Marketing. This show is all about value. This show is all about who are you? What do you do? Why do you do it? Who do you do it for? And most importantly, why do they care? Because when they care, you stop being a commodity and you start being a brand worth loving. You start being the person that people come to and say, hey, I've got a problem. Can you help me? Instead of just being another price. And that's what this show is all about. And every week, we bring another guest on board to find out what they do, who they do it for, and how they help them get better. This week, I had Mike Saunders on the, t- on the show. Mike comes to us as an authority coach. And what he does is he helps people define their authority and bring it to the table. So sit back, enjoy the show, and I'll be right back afterwards. Mike, thanks for sharing the mic with me today. How are you doing today? Hey, Ben, doing awesome. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You know, let's get into this because this show is all about how do you differentiate? And you and I have had lots of conversations. We've had conversations offline. In fact, we just had a conversation just before the show started about how do you differentiate yourself? Because let's face it, there's too many people out there that are doing the same thing each and every day. You know, they're, they're putting themselves in the commodity role and they don't take the time to figure out who they are, what they do, what makes them unique, who their audience is, and really why those people should care. So how do you do that? What's your story? Tell me the story about Mike. You know, tell me where your company came from, where you are, and where you guys are going. Okay. So um, I am a marketing consultant, but that's like seeing a stockbroker because exactly. – the first thing you think about is, oh, my, my cousin got taken. But so marketing consultants, you know, are the people that get, you know, you call and say, I'll do SEO for you. And back in the day, I've, I've had my agency for nine years and I started off doing anything for anybody at any time. Of course. We all, I think we all, we all did. did. Right. We need a paycheck. Which, so we went with which that. is a mistake, yeah. right? Because you're like Mr. Miyagi says, you know, if you know karate a little bit, you get squashed like a grape. And the problem with that is you feel like, oh, well, this guy needs this. I'm going to do it. But you're not excellent at that. So mm-hmm. about four years ago, I repositioned and rebranded everything. And I focus on one specific thing, which is a marketing function, but it's the authority positioning. It's how to brand yourself personally and professionally as an expert. Well, just like what you said, we, anyone watching this, listening to this has a competitor or two or 10. What in the world is going to set you apart? Well, we have good service customers. No, right? I, I'll sit with clients many times and go, what's your competitive advantage? Well, we've got friendly staff and we've been in business 25 years. Yeah. That is not a competitive advantage. You better have that or else you'll be out of business. But that, that, that gets you to the table. You know, that's, that's the stuff it might. That, yeah. These days yeah, it might not. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you've got to figure out a way to make yourself stand out. So being able to focus on this authority positioning, and if you Google, you know, authority positioning, uh, those kind of phrases, expert positioning, it's a, it's a rising trend. And I know you're familiar with content marketing and I feel like authority positioning today is where content marketing was about five, six, seven years ago, because right, right now content marketing is not even a phrase or a, a word anymore. And here's why you better have good content in your marketing. So really it used to be marketing was advertising and this and that and content marketing. Ooh, that's interesting. We want to educate our target audience. That's content marketing. Wonderful. Now it's like content marketing. What it should be your marketing. So I feel like authority positioning is this new thing that people need to grasp onto to move their business forward. And in about five or 10 years, you don't even need to talk about it anymore because you better be positioning yourself as that expert and that authority. So that's where I'm at. And I, I teach on that. I train on that. And what I found, and I might have prospects and clients that are so different than anybody else. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I have clients that know they need something, but they don't want to do it themselves. Right. Right. (laughs) Or they don't, don't know how to do it. Or they, I mean, you know as well as I do that many times these consultants go in and if you really broke down what they did for their client, it's like, yeah. I could have done that. But if they gave you the checklist and the little three-page PDF and said, do it, you'd get to step two and go, am I doing it right? What if I need it? So what I, the point I'm making is, I teach and train on authority positioning and I've got right. some a book and I've got some videos and I, I, I will dial in exactly why you need to have this in your business. But then I take it to the next step and I go, 
I'm not going to give you some mastermind or online course. I'm going to do it for you. So I've got this package where I do take 20 minutes of your time and you get these deliverables. I've mm -hmm. got this package and you get this. So done for you with a little hint of done with you because it's never going to be a surprise like, oh, I didn't want it this way. So done for you packages with authority positioning so that your target audience sees you as the obvious choice. Perfect. So let's dive into that. You know, let's dive into that because it's, you know, in theory, it sounds wonderful. Yep. But here's the thing. I'm a small and medium sized company. I have a marketing plan. I do a little bit of marketing. I do some content marketing, but I'm not seen as a differentiated authority in my in my field. I'm not seen as the concrete guy or I'm not seen as the realtor or I'm not seen as the, you know, realtor who does uh, condos on the west side of Detroit right. or whatever. You know, you, you pick your niche cuz the more you can, you know, define your niche, the better off you are. You know, yeah. the more you can segment yourself and say this is what I really do, the more the authority you are. But they do these things. They just don't know how to articulate it. How do you yep. start them off? Like where's, where does the yep. process start and where does it go? Because it sounds, you know, it sounds simple, but it really isn't. It really yeah. isn't as, as simple as people think. And that's really why people need the expertise and the handle thing. Uh, agreed. And I will say that it's very, very simple because people get it, but then it's complicated complicated because they think I can't do it. But right. then when it's done for them with them, then they go, Ooh, this is a competitive advantage. Right. Here's, here's what I mean. I teach marketing for several universities and I teach marketing strategy and branding and all these things. And one of the, the things that I love doing is I like teaching my clients some of the academia that I teach in the classroom. And I like telling the students in the classroom online right. or offline classrooms, you know, here's what I do for clients. And it's so it's such a neat synergy. But there's something that I know you know what is called the buyer's journey. And it's a right. thing these days, right? It's, it's not just some marketing little uh, a flash in the pan. There's something called a buyer's journey. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, uh, um, you know, consumer buyers buying process. But we all go through a series of steps before we make any dis major buying decision. Now, a pack of gum, probably not. But a car or... Yep. In, in like your example, um, if someone's going to buy a large software, uh, uh, you know, project or consulting package, that prospect goes through certain um, buyer's journey, but steps like, I wonder if they're trustworthy. And some of these steps, they logically have to get checked off in their mind. And some of them are subconscious. So right. there, it really is exciting when you can talk about these heuristics. And I've got a video on my website called Authority Heuristics, where it gets into the marketing psychology of how people make these decisions. So um, to bring it down to a really simple uh, example, you mentioned, you know, I'm a small to medium sized business and I need, you know, X. Um, I would say to you, like if you're the business owner and you're looking at these prospects and you want them to buy your, your widget, right? Right. Um, I will say to you, Hey Ben, um, could you right now, like in the next, if we put a, you know, you cleared your schedule for the next 10 minutes, mm -hmm. could you write down the top 10 questions you normally get from prospects about your product or service? Would it be simple to write down 10 questions? Yep. Easy. For most for most of us, it probably people, would be, you know just look yeah, at yeah, Q, simple. just look at the Q and A on our website. You know yep. it's it's there. Yeah. Yep. You know? But but then get, guess what? What if I said okay now click done good job. Now for the next ten minutes, I want you to write down ten should ask questions. And mm -hmm. these are the questions that your prospects should be asking if they knew to ask them because then they really like oh. Yeah, that's a good point. So mm -hmm. what's the next level question that people, once they get the easy things out of the way, what is 10 more questions that go a little bit deeper that make them go, aha. So could you, you know, I know you'll say yes, but what if you then, uh, if it took the next 10 minutes, you wrote down 10 should ask questions that are a little bit below the surface, but if these 20 questions were answered and, and really absorbed, that prospect would get it. Right? right now you take those 20 questions and you put it on a nice PDF and email it to somebody in one ear and out the other, put it on your website, FAQ, eh, whatever. But when you can amplify those, each one of those questions and drill deep and create what I call an authority positioning portfolio right. of authority positioning assets with each one of those. Now you've got something powerful. So now what I'm doing is I'm combining authority positioning with the buyer's journey to have this thing that you can use in your business to educate. So content marketing, social media, what, do you, oh, what am I going to post now? Um, oh, let me post this quote again today. No. What if you were to say, Hey, you know what? I was recently interviewed on this business podcast on my you know concept of blah, blah, blah. Take a listen, see what you think. And now your social media audience is like, huh? 
Ben was interviewed about, oh, that's an interesting point he brings up. So exactly. where I'm going to, I'm going to land the plane with, with that, that point, which is with those 20 questions, those really basic ones, those really deep ones, what if we took question number one? And I said, Ben, um, on my show, my podcast show that I have that, you know, I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of people. I want you to jump on the phone and I want to um, do a phone interview with you on my podcast. And I'm going right. to just really go deep on that question. Number one, I'm not going to let you get off to something else. I'm going to say, I'm going to keep you right on that question. Number one, okay. keep, keep me and, narrow and keep me focused. Yes. Because when you confuse, you lose. Right. Right. A confused mind doesn't buy. So I want to do people in that one thing. And could, so I guess what I, what I, uh, I'll ask the rhetorical question. If I said, do you take the, that one question and write me a four page article on it? You'd go, okay, I'll do that. And then four weeks later, you're like, Ugh, I'm two paragraphs in. But if I said, Ben, jump on the phone right now and I'm going to hit record, let's talk about that. You could just talk to the cows come home because right. you know your business. So now you take those 20, 10, whatever the number you want to think about, but the key, um, um, you know, uh, buyer's journey points where right. if someone understood these things, they would get it. And you then create these authority positioning assets focused on those things. Now I I've received a federal trademark, um, a grant, not a grant, but I, I received and, and applied for it. And I've got it on my website, uh, for the trademark authority positioning portfolio. So right. I feel so strongly about this that I went out and, and got something documented. And what it is, is basically all of these things that you do that would elevate your brand, yourself personally or professionally in the eyes of your target audience. So like um, interview this number, this interview right here, or um, I wrote a book or right. um, I was mentioned in the media or whatever the case is, each one of those things, don't just let them go and post it to your Facebook once. Yeah gather them together in this authority, authority positioning portfolio. And that might look like a folder on your computer. It Whatever. might look like a couple links in your email signature. It might be a, a page on your website. So instead of an FAQ, how about an FAQ that's like, Hey, um, we were recently interviewed on several shows and mentioned in the media about several very important points mm -hmm. that you probably have as a, as a, a consumer. Here's the list, L watch, listen, click, learn. So then it's like, Hey, what would happen if fill in the blank and they go click and they can listen to that. They can watch this video. Maybe it's a video here, audio there. The point is now all of a sudden you've got something very substantive and right. you get your competitor that points someone to the frequently asked questions section on their website and they get you that either emails them three or four of these things or points them to a page on your website that has these vibrant, you know, thumbnails of you being interviewed mm -hmm. or how about the ultimate thud factor you drop that copy of your book ahead of a meeting, after a meeting, in the meeting, whatever the point is, your competitors probably aren't published authors. So whichever combination of these things that you think of, the point is if, if some or all of these things were done for you and you hardly have to do any work at all, but talk about what you know, do you think that would make you the obvious well, choice compared to your Well, there's value to that. I mean, there's value to that because what you're doing is putting something where – most of my audience right now is going, oh, my God. And it's like was drinking through a fire hose. And when they sit there going, oh, my God, look at all these pieces and all the things. And I, they, oh, these are all really good ideas, but I'll never implement them. But if somebody could implement them yep. for you. But if what if I told you that in one 20 minute phone call, you could have like five of these things done like that? Um, right. I could do that. And then what if I said in three hours of your time, you could be an Amazon bestselling published author. Could you use that in your business? Three hours? Yeah, I can do that. So yeah, you're right. I like to do that professionally confuse people to go overwhelm. I, I want that. I want that, but I can't do it. Oh, 20, I can do 20 minutes. Oh, right. three hours over a course of 90 days. I can do that. Uh -huh. But yet you get these things. And, and how about this? Ben, how long does a Facebook ad campaign work for you? A good one might, might get you 90 days. Uh, wrong. And here's why. And I, I set you up, so I'm not trying to make you look bad. It only works as long as you feed the machine and pay it. Because you pay Facebook X, you get the ads running. When you stop paying, ads disappear. You can't find the history, the archive of your right. Facebook ads. There's no tangible evidence. There's no, right. there's no concrete thing that's sitting there right. that's yours and that's tangible. It's, it's gone. It's a puff of smoke. But with these things we're talking about, like right, I can show on my website, I love doing this. I met with a guy literally an hour ago that I'm doing these packages for. And I was like, hey, did you get that email? I showed you where people, um, like, like for instance, do you know right now that SEO, search engine optimization, is a wonderful industry, but probably for most people watching and listening to this, they don't need SEO, but their prospects are Googling their name and their business. Mm -hmm. What do they see? 
wouldn't it be wonderful if they Googled, you know, Ted Lipinski and the name of Ted's business and they saw, oh, there's his website. Okay, obviously he's got his website. Oh, LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he was interviewed on, huh? Oh, look at this um, um, media piece. I'm going to check old Ted out on that interview. Those are assets. Those are long-term assets. So that's why I call them authority positioning assets because once we do it and I do it for you, with you, right? And it's hardly any time. Once that's done, it's out there working for you online. So they're digital assets. And, and if you have a book, then it's a physical thing. You're touching and feeling, handing to someone. So the, the beauty of this that I think people miss is we need to be doing things to separate ourselves from the competition. It takes money to invest, but you want that investment to pay off long-term dividends. And these right. things are paying off online digitally. And when you do things like the book, then it's physical things like that. And the power and the pre-framing that it does for that prospect before you even walk in the door. Here's, here's a question I'll ask you. You as a business or anyone listening to this, do you think that you are going to, um, you know, the, 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 the magical uh, go to my website, add to cart, click now and you wake up and here's millions and trillions or thousands of dollars. It doesn't happen like that. Most people that are consultants, entrepreneurs, higher end, even you know, corporate executives, you don't close a deal online or remote. You talk, you meet with, you connect with. So don't you think that there's a time that you would have a meeting with someone in the next couple of weeks to kind of see if there's a, a, some synergy between your organizations? right? I mean, that's the way we do business. We, we meet with people. What would happen if you sent them a package ahead of the meeting? You know, Hey Tom, been here, just uh, looking forward to our meeting next week. Would love to, uh, you know, connect with you and just see if there might be a fit. If not, that's fine too. We'll have a great cup of coffee. But in the meantime, thought I'd drop this uh, mail piece uh, in the mail to you or an email, whichever one you, you choose, but Hey, I want to get you a copy of my book and, and Hey, here's a little thumb drive with some interviews I've done on some radio shows. Take a cruise through there before we uh, connect because it'll help answer a lot of basic questions. Right. So Mike, I got yeah. one big question for you. How do you personally make sure when you're doing all this work for people and it's great work that you do, how do you make sure you're on their brand, that you're, that you're speaking in their voice, that you're making sure that whatever piece that you're putting out is consistent, that the message is clear, and whether we're talking a book, we're talking an interview, we're talking you know, a podcast, we're talking you know, LinkedIn articles, we're talking whatever pieces that we're talking about, you know, that it's consistent across the platforms yep. and that it's spoken in their voice and in their brand. Um, you're bringing up something in marketing academia called IMC, Integrated Marketing Communication. So it needs to be a consistent voicing across all your channels for your brand. So excellent point, excellent question. A lot of times when you hear done for you, it's like, hey, I'm going to write a blog post for you once a week and I'm going to do all this stuff. Well, the way that I achieve what you just asked is the fact that it's in the clients, in your voice. So when I'm talking about these you know, pieces on the frequently asked questions and we do the interview number four on whatever topic, it's your voice on the podcast. It's your voice when it gets transcribed and, and brought into a book publication. So that's the beauty of, you know, well, I'm going to lose control. I don't know what they're going to say. A ghostwriter isn't going to say, uh -uh, it doesn't happen that way. It's your voice. Now right. I help and coach and guide you because I'll, I'll take a question and go deeper. And like after many interviews, they'll go, Oh my word, I've never gone that deep before. That was a really good question. So I'm able to draw it out, but it's you, your voice, your voicing, you know, literally your voice, but you're voicing because it's your experiences. And I would venture to say that many people listening to this offer service that competitors offer, but because of your background, personal and professional background, you're able to, to deliver whatever it is that you do in a really unique way because just of your experiences. And when you can tell that story through your voice, mm -hmm. um, your voicing, your brand voice, you know, not just your spoken voice, but now your, your target audience understands and goes, oh, I, I kind of get that now because I've heard it before, but it never really clicked. But you said it in a really unique way. It really resonated with me. Right. You know, and that's important. It's important for people to not have that fear that it's going to be taken away from them or misconstrued or misunderstood or misaligned because yeah. your brand is important. Yep. Your brand it's is you. vital. Yeah, it's you. I'm not talking about your logo. I'm talking about your yep. brand. It's, it's yep. how do people think about you when you're not in the room? And that's yep. what the book does. That's what the article does. That's what everything does. But it's making sure it's consistent across the different platforms. Because if it's not, you're doing yourself a disservice. So you need to because make Because then you're, you're feeding someone's shiny object syndrome. Exactly. You know, if you're over here talking about this and then you're over here, then you're talking, then they just feel like, I'm exhausted just trying to follow that dude. But if you're on point, 
they're, they're slowly but surely getting it. And it's just like, because like we said earlier, you know, a confused mind doesn't buy. You can't confuse people. You want to get them that one step. And then when you, they get there, you want to go, okay, now we got that in your business or doing whatever we're doing. Now the next step is, and you, you want to give them that 30,000 foot view, like what I was mentioning to you before, where it's like, wow, that's so much stuff. But the first step is just this. And then you move forward to the next step and then it becomes so easy, but you're exactly right. You don't want to have different voicings or, or, you know, like the brand voice. It's not the logo. It's, it's your brand persona. You don't want to have one way in front of one other group and another way over here, because now all of a sudden people, they just, they, they might not even logically think this feels disjunct, but they just kind of feel uneasy. It just, it's just scattered, you know? No, and I get that. It's, it's important. It's important to make sure that it doesn't feel scattered. So, when you're working with a with a, a brand new client and you walk them in the door, what is the first conversation you'll have with them? Before before we get to the point where you sit there and say, here's, you know, give me 10 questions, give me the next 10 questions. What is the first thing you want to know about a client in a new in a new atmosphere? Um, probably I would want to know their target audience and what package they deliver and what the lifetime value of that customer is. Mm-hmm. Cause once I could determine that, then I can help them realize that some of these marketing packages, whatever that they may be, maybe some things I refer to someone else because I don't handle, but that becomes more of an investment, not a cost. You know, like if you sell pencils, I'm not going to do a full authority positioning package for you because it's, you know, yes or no blue or black. But when, when I can realize that, you know what, you've got clients that you earn X on and the lifetime value of that client, if they stay with you, refer is huge. Then I want to be able to say, now tell me what marketing for you has worked in the past. Okay, good. I, I see that this has worked. What's not worked? Right. And you can kind of get that contrast and go, okay, I see that you kind of got a little excited about this one and this one really bugged you because it didn't work. Mm-hmm. What if we had a way to you know, make your target audience outreach and have them really resonate with your brand, with your voicing, with a package like this that hardly costs you any time, effort, and a very, very low investment. Would something like that work to kind of elevate your status and your brand? So being able to uh, uh, ascertain that is really, really helpful. And sometimes you find people that, you know, like you watch the, the show, The Profit or, or uh, Shark Tank and people sure. don't know their numbers, right? Yeah. It's like, What's your client acquisition cost or what's your numbers or your balance sheet and people don't know? Well, you need to know at least the basics. Like, well, when I have a package of X, you know, my profit margin is Y, you know, I, I know I can invest at least a few hundred dollars into this to get a client because I know the profit yep. margin. You got to know that. Absolutely. So I've got one last question for you and then I'm going to let you go. Cause we've, you know, we've unpacked an enormous amount of stuff today, yep. but let's, let's do this. When you leave a meeting, whether it's online or in the car or whatever, and you get in the car and you drive away, what's the one thing you want people to think about you and your company when you're not there? Um, I would say that I want them to remember one of my frequently used taglines, which is building your authority is your number one priority. Right. Because it really is. If you can be working in your business of building your authority and getting that one extra piece of asset or that other extra interview or that other blog, whatever, whatever the assets are, we don't even need to talk about that. But when you can focus on building the authority of your personal or professional brand, that should be your number one priority. Everything else falls into place. You know, the sales conversations go easier. The referrals come easier. So that's what I would want people to remember is building your authority is your number one priority. I love it. Mike, thank you very much for taking time to be with me today. Hang out in the green room. I'm going to be right back. I just uh, want to say goodbye to everybody. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining me on the show today. My name is Ben Baker. and My company is Your Brand Marketing. Now, 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, what do we do? We consult. We do workshops and keynotes. And what we do is we help you define your story. We help you tell your story in a unique way so people understand your value to them and they care and they do business with you. But every Wednesday at 10 o'clock in the morning on the West Coast, this is the Your Living Brand.live show. We'd love to see you here. See you next week.